all the recording. Okay, once again, I just wanted to share again, my name is Cynthia and we're here for Circle of Love. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me flash over to my work surface and I will show you what I have there. Um, first of all, I have a blank sheet of paper. I actually have a pencil. I didn't put that on my supply list, but if you have something to draw with or write with somewhere nearby or just use one of your um, other coloring supplies. I have some markers for coloring supplies today. I have some watercolors for coloring supplies. And since I'm using markers, I have some brushes and I have some water. Okay. All right. And today's activity is called Gracious Gratitude Page. We're going to be actually using this inspiration um, from another artist that I've shared the link for as well, if you're interested in learning more. Um, this page I loved because actually because of this bird and I love the way the bird looks like almost like it's sitting on top of a mountain this very fun 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 curvy mountain and it's like and yes it looks like it's singing but it could also be sitting at the top of the mountain and just thinking and just looking out at its whole world and thinking about what it is grateful for and thankful for Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna guide you through some of the steps of this page um, and then you'll get a chance to add whatever you want to it as well, all right? I am gonna start with my pencil right now and the first thing I'm gonna do is work on the bird. Now you can make this bird as big or as small as you want. So I'm gonna go a little bit bigger with my bird. And as you can see, I'm starting with a circle for the head. And notice I'm just going around and around and around, okay? to make that circle a very general circle. And later I'll get a chance to erase all those extra lines if I want to, okay? And I'm also not pressing too, too hard so that my pencil is able to be erased when I want to later. Now attached to that circle, I'm gonna put an oval. I'm just gonna attach it somewhere around at this angle, okay? And notice the oval is a little bit bigger than the circle, but not too much bigger than the circle. Because it's an oval, it's obviously longer than the circle, okay? And so I just put this somewhere on the side of the page. You could put it lower down. You could put it uh, where the oval is on this side instead so the bird is facing that way. It's your choice. You get to choose. And this is where we begin to join the circle and the oval to create the body. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the, this edge here or this side of the circle and I am going to draw a very, cur like a slight curvy line to attach it from this circle here to this oval here. And I'm going ahead and drawing a darker circle now. I say circle, I mean line that has a curve here, goes straight down and kind of curves right there, kind of like for the belly of the bird. Now, if you want it to make it even a little more curvy, so maybe your bird has a little bit of a bigger belly just for fun, you could go in a little bit right here with your line as well, if that's something you want to try, okay? For the outside, or I should say the back of the bird, I'm going to continue this dark line around like this at a curve right along the curve of the circle until I hit that oval. And as soon as I hit that oval, I'm gonna start now with the curve of the oval, coming around like this to the very end of the oval around here somewhere. So I did dark, 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 dark here and dark, 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 dark here, okay? Excellent. And now it's time to attach the tail. So I want to show you really quickly here in this example, this really, really fun, curvy, decorative tail that this bird has. Um, it's very playful. I really like that about that bird. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to imagine that this is me, this bird is me, and that I'm going to design my tail really, really big. So I have lots of room to add decoration. And my tail is going to be in the shape of this kind of spiral. Okay. Later I'll go in and fill in the tail. Right now, I just want to have a general shape of the tail. Your tail could come down to the bottom of the page. Your tail can come this way and that way and take up this whole entire corner of the page. You get to choose how you want to design your tail. And now it's time to add the little beak. So I'm gonna come up here to the top of the circle and I'm gonna put, I like the idea of the beak. 
I, I'm looking at this little beak right here, and I really like the shape of this little beak, the way that the top kind of curves upward and the bottom kind of curves downward. They're almost like lips. I like that idea. So actually, I'm going to make mine, there we go, go upward a little bit there. So I'm starting with one line here, and I'm going up with it, and I'm going to bring it back down. And I think I will create the entire top piece of the beak completely like that for starters on mine. Of course, you can design your beak however you wish. And then I'm going to do the opposite thing down here for the bottom of the beak, kind of shooting outward like that with a little bit of a curve. And so now it's starting to feel like a bird singing, okay? This is where we can take time now. Oh, actually, I, I take it back before we do that, before we erase any of these extra lines right here for the circle, we're gonna go ahead and add our wing. And the wing comes right here. It shares the same line as the oval. So it shares the same, same, same line here as the oval, but then it curves up from there and it comes down like that. So it makes this big, huge, almost teardrop shape or raindrop, upside down raindrop shape. And again, remember that it shares the same line right here as the oval and then starts curving inward and around and back down again. Okay. And now we have a wing. Again, later we'll get to go in and design that wing if we want to. Okay. Um, but there is something else we need to make sure that we finish adding, and that is the eye. So I'm going to put an eye right here for the bird. Um, I kind of want to put a more realistic eye. I'm feeling like I want to do some kind of a decorative eye like that. Okay, for mine, you can design the eye any way you want, any way at all. It could just be a simple dot. That's totally fine too. All right, and now um, it's time to lightly, lightly, very lightly draw yourself a, I'm gonna call it a path from the top of the, or the top part of the beak, lightly, 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 that kind of sw swings around and comes on down. Okay, and the same thing from the bottom beak, because this is where we're going to include our main message. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so it see it looks like a it looks like a path. It looks like a path, and we might later want to erase those guidelines of our path. Okay, that's why I drew them very lightly so that they can easily be erased later if we want to. But we don't really want to see them very much right now. Okay, and inside of there, we're gonna go ahead and include our very first message. And that is going to be the message of thankfulness, okay? So here is where we can say something like, I am grateful for, or I am thankful for, or I am so thankful. I feel like for me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, I am so thankful, okay? I wanna be a thankful bird this morning. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to make my letters take up the entire height like this or thickness of my path that I created. So you see the letter I, the very top of the letter I starts here on the edge of the path and it comes all the way down here to the bottom of the path, okay? I, and now I'm gonna include the word am. So I'm coming over here and making my A super tall, my M super tall. I am, you see how it's taking up the entire, entire width of the path. And now, boy, the word um, thankful is really long. So I have to now squeeze it in. So I'm gonna have to make those letters super long and super skinny. You know what I'm gonna start to do to be creative and make sure this fits is I'm actually gonna start tucking the letters into each other. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of starting the H right here next door to the T, I'm going to start the H right here tucked under the T. And I'm going to make this H be a lowercase h. There we go. So it's tucked under the letter T right here, and it I turned it into a lowercase h. 
You can play around also with that uppercase, lowercase. There are no rules. There really aren't any rules. I'm gonna continue going until I have finished writing out the word thankful, fitting in the word thankful, not to mention. I'm gonna squeeze the F right here, right into the little corner of the K, just like that. It's a shorter little F. That gives me room to get the U in there, nice and tall, and get the L in there, nice and long. There we go. I am thankful. Awesome. All right. So now that we have our singing message, um, it's time also to add either a tree or a bush or a mountain or whatever you want to be sitting on as this bird. So I'm coming back to the idea here, remember, of this artist um, who has this fun, 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 almost mountain looking form here. And I'm going to come and start adding that. And I'm going to add that from this little, see this little wedge right here, this little area here. I'm going to make my line come out from there, follow the curve of my tail, and then come down like this and come and make another spiral. Again, that's what I am doing for mine. I really like the idea of a spiral. And when I then continue the line over here, it almost turn, turns into something that looks like a wave. And I like the idea that it could be a wave or it could be something else. See, just being very playful with those lines, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and also add on this side a, um, let's see here, I think I'm gonna take it from the edge here of this oval, a line that just comes this direction. It doesn't have to be very fancy or you can change that line and you can make it be whatever you want, okay? Um, here in this area, if this acts kind of like as a ground area, a hill, a mountain, uh, maybe it's a waterway, who knows what it is, but maybe it's, you know, related to uh, the earth somehow, and it is a ground, then this acts kind of like the sky area, okay? And I like the idea um, that it could be a sky that's filled with clouds, or it could be a sky that's filled with wind. And right now in this season, the wind has begun. So, um, and I also am thinking about how the wind is often represented with spirals. And since I'm a big fan of spirals and I already added a spiral in my tail, a spiral over here for the ground, I am gonna use the symbol of the spiral also for wind. And I'm going to put a few different spirals kind of floating around here. I'm going to put one inside of here. Uh, I think I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to add a little one right here. Going. Notice I changed the direction of my spirals, right? One's going that way, one's going the opposite way. Okay. All right. And now let's see here. There's one more thing I myself would like to add for the design of this page. And that is some hearts. And here's why uh, I love, and we can mix things up. First of all, I love to mix up things that might not normally be happening in a real scene like this. For example, if a bird was sitting on a top of a mountain and there were, and there was wind in the air, there would probably not be all of a sudden random dangling little hearts like this from out of nowhere. That's not reality. And that's why I love it. Sometimes I like to go in and insert some imagination. We did use imagination already when we were thinking about designing this fun tail or designing this fun ground. Okay, I'm going to add more imagination by putting in these little like hearts that are dangling down on a string. And those are going to have some special meaning later. I'll, I'll explain them better later. Okay, so I've got one dangling from this edge, one dangling from that edge, one dangling from that edge. And if you'd rather put uh, maybe circles, use circles because maybe they're more like ornaments, you know, holiday time is coming up. You're welcome to turn those into circles or whatever makes sense to you. 
Okay. All right. And now it is time. It is time. It is time to think about the things that we are thankful for. And sometimes those are easy to think about. Sometimes those can be tricky because maybe there's something that's really upsetting us right now. And for that reason, we want to try to think about the good parts of it. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see. I'm going to put these, by the way, I'm going to put all of these different ideas of what I'm thankful for in all the different places of my drawing. So, or I might do one like around where my heart is and one like around where one of the spirals is and one around where my tail is. I can kind of spread them around like that. Or I could put them all where the hearts are. Um, it's, there are no rules. You get to decide. Okay. So we're going to take a moment right now and I'm going to go ahead and think about, of course, I'm going to put family in here I'm, and I'm going to put family down here by my tail because my family is so much a part of me. Okay. So I want to put it really, put them really close to me. Um, oof. I also have to include my friends. You know, I'm going to put the word friends. I'm going to put the word friends friends like this, okay, inside the layers of this spiral that I used for the ground, because I feel like friends are also something that really ground me. They really keep me, um, or they're, they're, they're a constant thing in my life that keep me um, happy and mm -hmm. thankful. So I've got these two here. I am going to add, I think over by this floating heart over here, I think I'm gonna add the word art. I am so grateful for art. I'm so grateful for creativity. It's so fun. And it's also um, a great way to express yourself. So I appreciate that. I really am grateful for that and thankful. And then I'm going to think about something in my life that might feel hard right now. Like, for example, let's see, sometimes people during this holiday time start thinking about their family members that they can't be with for lots of different reasons, and they start to get sad about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my family members that I can't be with on these holidays for various reasons. And I think I'm going to use this other heart right here to represent them, to remember about them, okay, and send them extra love. So I am going to just put the words extra love, and then I will remember later what that, who that extra love was for, okay, or what that extra love was for. So you could add extra love wherever that is needed, especially for those people or those things or places or memories that you were really, really fond of, that you really love a lot. And you're so thankful that you had and that you got and you received. And so you give them a little extra love. And I think I'm going to put even extra love over here. Yep. There we go. On this other heart that I had dangling, I'm going to use that for even more love for all kinds of other things that I can't even have time right now to list all of them. There's so many, okay? Awesome. So what we have so far is we have now a drawing outline. We have some words we've incorporated in there, some messages, and I think it's time to begin adding color. Now, later you will be able to add more design, more detail, also more um, words if you wish. Um, but for now, we're going to begin with color so that we can kind of start to see how this is coming together, okay? And remember, I'm using my watercolors. You're welcome to use whatever colors you have. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to paint in or I'm going to color in this all this background. And I really like the idea of the blue um, for the background, almost like a turquoise blue. I'm gonna, I like to change the colors a little bit sometimes. And I'm gonna start here on the edge, towards the edge. And if you're using markers or you're using crayon, I also recommend you do this. Start on the edge, especially if you've chosen a dark color like I have, this blue. And then as you come in from the edge, you either let your paint run out a little bit like this, 
or you change to a lighter color. So if I was gonna change to a lighter color, let me show you what I mean. Okay, I think I'm gonna go over to this. I happen to have a much lighter blue. So I'm gonna switch to this lighter blue now. And as I move in towards this bird or towards the body of the bird, I've switched to that lighter color and so now I'll be able to see the bird a little bit more easily. It won't get lost. Oh, something else to think about. Try to keep all your background color like this outside of the, of the path of the singing. Remember the path of the singing of what the bird is singing right here? So notice I'm not putting my background color at all inside that path. Okay, think about it. That's something else that can help you to keep those words really standing out so that you can read them very easily later. You can also add more color in there in a different way. And I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm still coming down here. I'm adding my, I'm adding my uh, background color. I'm going ahead and using, especially where we have our words, use colors that are so light that you can still see your words. You can still see your writing. So I'm gonna show you what I mean here where I have the word written that is friends. I did paint right over it, but I painted with such a light blue that the word friends easily still stands out, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of, darker color here towards the edge of this just to be more playful with that the effect of that okay if that's something that you like how it looks you can give it a try okay. all right um so I filled in now very generally the background with the blue I'm going to think about what colors I might want to try for the ground Remember this part on my page is actually still a part of the tail of the bird. So I'm not gonna go inside of this area. I'm gonna stay out here in this area right now with this next color. And I think I am going to um, stick with a greenish kind of color scheme for this. Um, maybe maybe even more green, more turquoisey. Yeah, I'll give it more turquoise, okay. And I'm gonna come around like this going around my tail, I'm gonna just finish filling in the entire ground. And as I'm working, I'm noticing, you know, that turquoise isn't quite feeling totally right to me or totally the way I want it to feel. So I'm gonna try out some purple and see what happens. Let's see if that gives me the feeling that I'm looking for. And I'm liking the purple. I think I'm liking the purple better. It just feels better to me. So again, I'm gonna do the thing where I go along the edge of the page first, maybe with some darker, like this color. And then as I move in towards the center of the page, I let that color start running out or I switch to a lighter version or I just switch to a lighter color altogether. Okay, let's get this. I wanna get this dark here, that dark there. Okay, and a little bit dark here. So this is where you get to play around with lights and darks. And you know, I like that idea, that concept as a metaphor, because again, in this page, we're including the things that are that we're really excited and happy about, the things that are easy for us to remember and be thankful for. But we're also including maybe some things that are difficult or things that make us a little sad and that we're trying to give more love to, extra love to, okay? All right. All right, so I have filled in this purpley color for my ground. Again, I also like another opportunity to change the colors, make them different than what they normally are. So making the ground different from green that it normally, normally is. Those are all ways you can uh, practice your creativity, grow your creativity, and also find new, uh, new techniques that you really like. It's kind of an experimentation process. All right, it's time now to begin filling in the body of your bird, which here is in a sense, it could be representing yourself actually, I, I will say. For, my, for me, it is representing myself. And 
I'm going to look for a color that's not used yet. So it's not used in my background and it's not used on my grounds so that my bird will stand out. And right now, I, oh, you might also want to choose a color that's very, very, very light. For example, I'm going to go with this yellow color that I have here and just fill the whole thing in generally like this with that very, very light color as a background of the tail. You'll see what I mean in a moment, okay? If you keep it very, very light, then you can put other colors on top. That, and if you're working with crayon, this might be a little bit of a tricky thing to do with crayon, but I think you can still do it. If you just colored lightly with the, the, the first layer of crayon, then you can go over it with darker layers too. And you know, you don't have to have the same, that your tail be the same color as your body. So I'm gonna change that. I And you don't have to always choose colors that you love. For example, I sometimes, don't really um, enjoy orange so much, okay? I don't know why, it's just a color that I seem to avoid. So here I'm gonna practice challenging myself and choosing that color on purpose. And look, I'm even using it for the bird itself. That's a big deal to me. Okay, and I'm just filling in all the different areas. Okay, there we go, of the body of the bird, okay? And now I'm feeling like, now that I see that orange on that bird, I'm gonna take some red, which is darker than orange. So here's where you could choose a little bit of a darker color just for the edges. So I'm kind of going over the edges of the oval, edge of the circle like this, edge of the wing, just to make those kind of stand out a little bit more, okay? Then I'm going to go back to my tail and I'm going to do the same thing. And since I use yellow for my tail and I'm looking for color that might be darker, I think I might try some of this um, magenta, kind of like a pinkish almost, dark pink. See what happens. Okay, yep, it's, it's working, it's working. And I'm just going to trace the outside edge of that. Okay. Once you've traced those edges or kind of, you know, gone over the, the edges towards the edges with a little bit of a darker color, it's going to be time to go over all your other background um, elements. For example, I remember my spirals that I used for the wind. It's time to go over those. And you could use the same color that you use for your background, or you can use a different color. It's whatever feels right to you. I'm thinking... I think I want to try a different color. And I think I'm going to try this. It's like a peach color. I'm not sure if it'll show up and I'm not sure if it'll be the right color, but I'm going to just test it and see what happens. That's another thing that can help grow your creativity is even when you're unsure of whether that's the right color, you go and you test it. You go ahead and you try it. And I think I'm okay with it. It's kind of what it looks like. I think on the screen, it looks a little more brown. To me, it looks a little more peach in real life here. All right, so I'm going to keep going with my little spirals and swirls and just going over the uh, outlines of those. And I'm going to go ahead and go over the outlines of the strings that are holding up these little hearts. Yeah, I'm just going to go over those as well. Okay. And maybe you have other things in your background that you need to go over, but now it's a good time to continue filling in color in all these areas. Eventually, if you want to, you also can go over your words, your writing that is, with color as well. So I could switch to permanent marker here in order to trace over all of my letters, okay? But I encourage you to keep going, keep going as, until you have filled, filled, filled every little area. You can also go back and add detail there in your tail um, and all other areas. You can even add more detail and design into the ground area as well um, until you're happy with it, until you really have thought about all the different ways that you've represented gratitude and thankfulness here on the page.
Okay. To my friends who are watching this recording, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining us and thank you for trying this creative activity. I hope that you can try to join us again next month for Circle of Love as well.